Hey, welcome back. My guest in this segment is Manasha Kestenbaum. He's the CEO of Enthusiast Gaming Holdings, trading on the TSX Venture as of today under the symbol EGLX. Manasha, welcome to the show. Thank you. Manasha, st can we start with an overview is what is exactly eSports and eGaming? Sure. Um, eSports is, think of real sports or classic sports that everyone knows. Uh, baseball, basketball, football, mm -hmm. um, but instead of having physical activity running around, um, it's all done virtually inside of a video game. What that enables is that you could do all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, you know, the sky is the limit mm -hmm. to uh, what's possible, the type of stadiums that could be created, the type of games and gameplay mechanics. Um, and this has been going on for a while now in underground and smaller scenes, but re recently it's reach the mainstream and it's just getting larger and larger support. I think you're gonna see it being something massive in this industry very soon. So this means people are competing in a sort of forum environment on games like Xbox and Wii and these various things? Yeah, um, well let's take computer for example. Um, so imagine you have been playing a peewee hockey game, right? You've played it at home and then maybe you've taken a little bit more professionally and really put time into it and you got really good and then you start to weed out the people who are kind of uh, B level and you get to the A level players and there the skill is unprecedented and quick thinking strategy. Now take all of that and put it into video games where you have mm. let's say a game that 30 million people are playing. Now out of those 30 million people you're going to have those who are almost Pee Wee level or Bantam League the minor leagues, and then you're gonna have people who are really world class. Um, and if you have heard of Twitch, where people could watch other people playing, it's actually something people are just fascinated by. There's more people watching gaming than actually playing gaming. Oh. So people sit and stare at these world class gamers playing all day, and there's big prize money and leagues cropping up uh, from big companies trying to create this new model, which I think is gonna eclipse uh, traditional gaming. Interesting. So what would you say is the global sort of value of the marketplace? Well, the figure that they give right now is that a billion people in the world are gamers right now. So it's like one um, sixth or seventh of the world. One seventh of the world, I think they're saying. So the, the entertainment mm. sector just in North America, last I checked, was something like $600 billion. Mm -hmm. That's made up of movies, film, television, music, uh, sports. Uh, movies and television used to be the biggest, um, and now gaming has surpassed that in the past 10 years okay. um, and just continues to grow. So what, just to get a sense of what is the most valuable purse for what most valuable sort of gaming environment? So the biggest one right now is the Dota 2 uh, tournament held by Valve called the International. Um, I forget the number, but it's north of 20 million. It, cause it, First prize it is 20 million? Yeah, over 20 million. So one guy wins 20 million. One team will one win team. the majority of that. Um, and the second place, uh, you know, right. they will have uh, for second and third place. Okay, um, so yeah. how does that work? How do the economics work for a public company? What, so what is it you actually do? So we actually aren't the ones who own a game. We're not a game developer and we don't own a team. What we own is uh, we have one of the largest gaming networks online where passionate enthusiast uh, gamers come online to one of our 85 sites and they consume content about the game. So think ESPN, um, you're not actually playing football on ESPN, but if you're a hardcore fan, you're going to ESPN to catch up on the latest updates, to read the editorials, to speak in the comments, go into the forums and chat with like-minded people. Mm -hmm. So we have about 85 of those sites and each are dedicated to something different. 85 sites, so yeah. each one is sort of game specific? Um, we typically stray away from the games and we go more for platform or a genre. We don't wanna be in a space where a game is popular one year and the next year it's gone and we've invested in the site. So right. we may have more like a Nintendo site or three Nintendo sites that are the largest Nintendo community sites out there. And whatever comes on to the Nintendo Switch, um, you know, that's what they talk about and they meet like-minded Nintendo players. Hmm. Same thing on eSports or sports games and PlayStation, Xbox. Um, okay, so we so have about 75 million gamers, uh, visitors monthly across the network and growing. Really, yeah. wow, that's yeah. impressive. Yeah. So how do you monetize that audience? Is it all advertising? So right now the majority of it is advertising. You know, there's about 12 billion ad requests across the network. 
Um, and most of that is taken from gaming companies who want to get in front of these gamers. Right. Gamers don't want to see things that are completely irrelevant to them. They hate those kind of ads. But if, you're, uh, if you have an ad that's about a game that they actually like, then that's okay with them. Um, mm. So relevant content speaks to them. Sure. There was an incident where uh, there was a shooting at an eSports yeah. event in yeah. Florida. Yeah. Um, is that kind of the, is, is, it, is it fair to categorize the industry as that kind of representative type of crowd? Is it, is it like gangsters and, <laughs> and kids with guns who take each other too seriously and actually start popping each other off? Is that common or is that just a rare instance that just happened to happen at a gaming event? Well, I think any kind of, like it could be sports fans, it could be anything where you're gonna have some people that are um, unwell, uh, unbalanced. A um, billion gamers, there's gotta a be a billion, couple in right? there. A, a <laughs> billion gamers are gonna have a lot of human beings there. So right. I would say more like if people who come home and watch two hours of Netflix or live TV, are they more uh, the types who, you know, based on the fact that they watch TV, does that mean they're, they're uh, gonna kill someone? I don't, I don't think so. Uh -huh. um, so I think that's, you know, you do have to have security. Like at our, our events, we have uh, a lot of security. Right. Um, just because there's a lot of people there. So it's just something you have to take into okay. account. Okay. So my computer is going to be appearing on, on the screen that the audience sure. is watching. Where do I go to see one of your sites here? Uh, well, let's take um, Destructoid. Destructoid.com. Destructoid.com. So that's a site um, that's been around as one of the top 10 gaming journalism sites in the world for about the t past 10 years. Oh, you could actually see an ad on the sides from Namaste. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> on the, so on Namaste the is the stock exchange. <laughs> right. So now you can see who one of our advertisers are. <laughs> right, well that's, um, that's proof of concept right there, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So this is, these are all news articles on different different video games. Yeah. It's all video games. All video games. Huh. Um, you'll see it on the right side, that sidebar, um, you'll see some of the reviews. So mm -hmm. these reviews, a lot of game, um, game companies put it onto the box, you know, in the accolades, uh, Destructoid is, you know, it's like an ESPN. They wanna, they wanna get the accolades from here. Mm -hmm. um, we bought this site last year um, along with Escapist magazine, which is you um, bought the site. We bought the two sites. So okay. So initially, they, because it came with a huge audience, relevant huge to Huge audience, core. a lot of revenue, and a phenomenal founder who had built it up from scratch over 10 years and built this fantastic team. He's now our director of content. Um, oh. So with the 85 sites, you know, I started my own blog. And at the time, it grew to a sizable audience, NintendoEnthusiast.com. But there was no one really monetizing it well that I could live off of, despite the amount of... Um, uh, eyeballs that I was getting. So at, in 2016, we kind of identified that a lot of these homegrown community grassroots sites with sizable audiences needed some kind of a, a vehicle or aggregator to come in and help them make money so that they could continue building their sites. Okay. So we created in April 2016 this network, which immediately took off and uh, had tons of sites joining it over the, the next few two years. Um, so we went from five sites to 85 sites in two years, and the 75 million gamers. But then we started um, identifying opportunities to acquire sites where you would have a founder of a site who had built up a staff. Um, he was making some money, but you know he, he would love to be part of something bigger. He would like to have a little bit of a nest egg to you know, invest in their future. Um, you know, maybe they had started off when they were 18 in gaming and, and putting a lot of time into this, and now you know, maybe they were 28 and looking to potentially start putting down roots. Mm -hmm. So that's where we would come in, um, offer them something to kind of join our network as an acquired site. Um, we would also, of course, instead of taking a, a cut of the revenue or commission, we would be taking 100% uh, of it. Right. Um, and that's where we've started to amass our own portfolio of sites that we actually own. Um, and hmm. we're, we like to choose uh, strategic ones. You know. Right, so do you generate all of this content internally or is it outsourced? Yeah, we have something like 200 freelance um, and contract um, writers. Oh, so you can actually find that, that number of talented writers yeah. that bring a sufficient literary quality to this or is it more that it's not required to have a high, like I'm not I'm right. sounding <laughs> condescending here yeah. accidentally, I don't mean to. No, but, you're, no, well, but think it strikes of the me billion, it's mostly kids. Think of the billion uh, gamers out there. Right. There must be some who sure. have a knack for writing, and right. those 
ones, the cream of the crop rise to the top. Uh -huh. And those are the ones that, you know, they, they rise through the ranks, whether they're starting off writing as a blogger on our forum communities, we identify them. We start giving them an opportunity on the front page of the sites, and then maybe they work up their way up to a bigger position. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, kind of, it's actually created, through Destructoid, a lot of the current gaming journalism uh, industry has been created through the sites over the past 10 years. Well, that's interesting. Um, so you're actually at the forefront of the birth of a whole new sector. Yeah. Interesting. You know what the number one job that people want to have is? It, um, they did a, a study recently. It's y being a YouTuber. Really? Yeah, that's the number one thing that people want to be. Well, and you have what? Makes sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. Uh, interesting. So, um, so you're not actually involved in the management of teams and, and capturing that prize pool. Are there companies out there that do that? There are team. There are companies that want to be team management. That you know, they they draft the players, they sign the contracts, they manage them, and there's a lot of skills involved there. And then they'll be flying them out to different um, events where they hope to take home a prize pool. Now there's a lot of different eSport games out there and the prize pool is not as high for all of them. Right. There's some that are more grassroots or fledgling. Um, you need a lot of support. So when you have a publisher who made the game really wanting to support this community, um, and usually it's a loss leader. You know, Riot Games for League of Legends one of the largest esports games of the past decade uh, had in incredible prize pools, but they weren't making money from that. They were doing that because 75 million people were playing their game, and it built a whole ecosystem where people wanted to buy skins. They bought, you know, the skins are uh, you could kind of dress up a gun or put on a, a uniform that you pay that are exclusive. Your friends all see it and you pay money for that. Oh, so um, that's your new sort of persona. Yeah, that's your new persona. That's your avatar <laughs> online, you know? Right. This is who you are in real life and yeah. off uh, uh, online. Uh -huh. um, so, th you know, a lot, of the, a lot of that is just to foster the community and get more people playing the game, even mm -hmm. if they're not at that high echelon of right. talents. Interesting. So then, from an investor perspective, if I'm an investor in enthusiast gaming, what am I going to look for in the next 6, 12, 24 months that are representative of value catalysts? In the industry or in the company? In, in your company in specifically. The company? Well, the big thing is that, you know, we, I started this little blog. And, you know, in, when we started April 2016, um, we had $350,000 in revenue. A year later, we had $3.5 million in 2017. Now we're doing over a million a month. And uh, in Comscore, where they verify third-party traffic, um, they're listing us as number five in North American gaming traffic. Hmm. So, you know, the ones above us, like number one is Twitch which was acquired for a billion dollars by Amazon years ago. They're worth way more now. Um, then you have uh, IGN, GameSpot, Curse, all institutional. And then you have us as the independent who just recently appeared on there um, and climbing up the, the ranks. So I think our goal is to continue growing our, our user base, our 75 million visitors, to a larger number and get you know, up there with the, the top one or two. Um, so user growth is important for us revenue growth as we've continued uh, growing extremely aggressively. Um, and then we also happen to have Canada's largest gaming convention, hmm. uh, which was kind of an offshoot for our community of saying, hey, why don't you guys meet offline, in person, and you know, come face to face. Make it real. Yeah, the first time we did that, um, we had 1,700 gamers come to it. A year later we put it on, we had 12,000 people come. Wow. And this past one we had uh, was 25,000. Wow. Yeah, so our next one is happening end of this month, October 26th to 28th. Hmm. We actually moved from the airport in Toronto to downtown Toronto, and we expect 40,000 people. At the convention center. At the center. convention center. Yeah, you need a big venue so, now. Yeah, wow. it's pretty much a culmination well, that's incredible. of the whole gaming scene in right. Canada. So at the end of the day, this is a media company. This is a media company with tech being built on top of it to give you one account and ID as mm -hmm. a gamer across the internet, across right. all of our sites but we're really a community platform. So um, right now it's, it's mostly media and content, but um, as we move on, I think it's gonna be uh, a lot more of the tech and events that power, help power the community. So I would say it's a, a blend of three different industries all together forming one community. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, Minasha, that's a fascinating <laughs> interview. I've got to say, I'm, I'm newly enlightened in the whole realm of esports. You're e going to have to digest that, right? Yes, I am. Sleep I am going to have to. At least I'm going to learn the language now. Yeah. Um, we're going to leave it there for now. We'll come back to you in a quarter's time, and maybe we'll come down and uh, shoot some segments at your convention if we can. Sure, 100%. And, uh, and we'll follow the story with interest and have you back soon. Thanks for joining me Thanks today. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me.